In a prior video, we have seen how the Van der Waals equation of state came to be in its form. Uh, and now it's time to evaluate that Van der Waals equation of state and see how good it is really to capture reality. Right, so we know that the Van der Waals equation of state uh, is, is uh, trying to uh, uh, capture those attractions and repulsions that you experience in gas, and that's much better than what the ideal gas equation of state does. So the question is, well, do those modifications really uh, make the equation better to capture reality? Now, the way that we're going to do that is by uh, just taking a look at whether the Van der Waals equation of state uh, allows to have a critical point, which means that you can have condensation, and if so, uh, we're going to evaluate then what uh, the critical compression factor is and how it agrees with with experiment. Okay, so this is what we're trying to do here. Again, notice that uh, the ideal gas equation of state only gives you this behavior, but you never condense, right? So the question is, well, does the Van der Waals equation of state allow you to find here a critical point and then condensation? Uh, yes, it turns out that the Van der Waals equation of state allows for condensation, even though some of the details of this diagram are actually not well captured. For example, right here you have oscillations, but you do have a condensation and a critical point. Okay, so we're actually going to now examine that critical point because uh, it turns out that uh, if you actually know the uh, critical point variables, so the critical pressure, critical temperature, and critical molar volume, it turns, that, it turns out that those are connected to the A and B parameters of the Van der Waals equation of state, and that is uh, fascinating because you can connect experiments, right, measurable uh, critical uh, values of a gas with uh, the theory, the Van der Waals equation of state. Okay, so that is that is useful, and that's what we're going to do in this video. All right, so first of all, we're going to rewrite here what the Van der Waals equation of state is, uh, and we're going to do it in two forms. Uh, this is the one that we have seen more commonly, but um, uh, there's going to be uh, a better one that we're going to use, which is a modification of this expression to work in molar form. In the end, it turns out that when we look at the critical point, this is the molar volume, so it's actually advantageous to turn this, to a, this equation into a molar form, which you simply divide by the number of moles uh, in the numerator and denominator, and then that gives you the molar form of expression, right? So uh, in molar form, this looks like that. RT over molar volume minus B, and this is minus your A constant divided over molar volume squared. Okay, right. so again now what we try to do is we uh, examine what the um, uh, relationship is between the parameters of the equation, this one that accounts for uh, repulsions, and the A parameter that accounts for attractions, and then we're going to connect those somehow to the critical pressure, uh, the critical molar volume, and the critical temperature right uh, at that critical point. Okay, so to actually uh, to do that, uh, what we have to recognize is that at the critical point, there's something uh, very important about this isotherm, right? So notice that the first derivatives are zero, okay, because the slope of the tangent, uh, or the slope of the tangent line to that curve right there is zero, so the first derivative is zero, but then there's an inflection point as well. So the second derivative is zero. Right, so what we're going to do is then uh, take first and second derivatives of this expression so that we can find the relationship between the critical parameters and the A and B constants of the equation. Okay, so let's uh, uh, do that in turn. Right, the first derivative uh, of that isotherm right at the critical point uh, is uh, going to be as follows. Again, this has to be zero, okay, by, uh, by looking at that graph. And that, uh, that expression looks like this, right? You take first derivatives of that, and that is going to be minus RT over molar volume minus B squared. And then this is going to be plus uh, 2A over the molar volume cubed. Okay, so solving for that expression, you get here uh, 2A over molar volume cubed, and uh, here you have RT over uh, molar volume minus b squared. Okay, this is the first expression that uh, stems from uh, taking the first derivative. Now, 
Uh, this should be the value of the molar volume at the critical point, right? So there should be here uh, comma C subscript, but I'm not going to write it for convenience. I will write it towards the end. Okay, but again, all of this only happens at the critical point because this is only true at the critical point, okay? Uh, or this is true at the, cr uh, the critical point right here. Now let's uh, take a look at the second derivative then. Okay, so the second derivative uh, is just going to be uh, the first derivative of the first derivative. So we take this expression and then uh, take the first derivative. Now that also has to be zero because of the infl inflection point that you see on the critical isotherm. All right, so let's take uh, first derivatives of this, which is going to be 2RT over uh, molar volume at the critical point minus B uh, cubed, and then that is going to be minus 6A over molar volume uh, to the fourth. And then when you condense those two expressions, you're going to get here uh, 6A over uh, molar volume to the fourth is equal to uh, 2RT over um, uh, molar volume minus the B constant cubed. Okay, so now we have two expressions uh, that relate uh, parameters of the critical point. So you have here the molar volume at the critical point, the temperature at the critical point, molar volume at the critical point, with the A and B parameters, right? So that's a system of two uh, unknowns like A and B, uh, or the molar volume if you want, and the critical temperature, and, and then we can we can kind of manipulate it to find those relationships between the A and B parameters and the uh, critical uh, point parameters, like the molar volume at the critical point, temperature and pressure. Okay, so uh, to do that, what we're actually going to do is just divide these two expressions. We're going to divide that expression over this expression. Okay, and uh, that is going to allow us to find a relationship between the uh, molar volume at the critical point and the B parameter. All right, so this A cancels out right there. This uh, fourth and uh, cube cancels there. So on the left-hand side of the equation there we have uh, the molar volume. Now I'm going to write at the critical point because we're getting towards the end here, divided over three. And on the right-hand side here we have RT, RT, more volume cubes there. Uh, so this is going to be, yes, more volume, the critical point minus B over two. Okay, so solving for that expression, we find uh, our first relationship between the uh, parameters of the critical point and the A and B constants of the Van der Waals uh, equation of state. Uh, the molar volume of the critical point is simply three times uh, the B parameter in the Van der Waals equation of state. Now notice that this is very beautiful because this is experimentally observable. You can know what this number is. For CO2, that number is uh, 94 cubic centimeters per mole. And it turns out that uh, that is connected in a trivial manner with the B parameter of this theory, right? That, that accounts for, uh, uh, you know, that is part of the repulsion term. Okay, so that is very good. Now, uh, the next step is then to try to find out what the critical pressure and the critical temperature are as they stem from the Van der Waals equation of state. Okay, so let's try to do uh, this here for um, uh, the critical temperature. Okay, so uh, the way that we're going to do that is, is by recovering this expression that we had right here. Okay, and uh, because now we have the uh, value of the critical molar volume. Okay, uh, I think that was uh, uh, cubed and then this is a squared, okay? Uh, that is a critical value, critical value. All right, and now we actually have the value of the molar volume at the critical point, which is 3B, so we should be able to find here our relationship uh, between the critical temperature and then the, then the A and B constants. Okay, so let's see if we can here uh, uh, do that. Okay, so we have 2A. Uh, the uh, molar volume at the critical point, which is just 3B, so that is going to be 27B cubed, okay, is equal to R times the critical temperature, okay, and here we're going to have uh, the molar volume critical minus B, so that will be 3B minus B, that is 2B that we have to square, so that is 4B squared. 
Okay. Uh, this makes solving for uh, the critical temperature straightforward. Okay, and uh, what we have here is this B squared cancels with that B squared. And then what we have here is 8A over 27RB. Okay, that is another way that you can connect uh, um, an experimentally observable uh, parameter, right, that critical temperature with the A and B constants in the Van der Waals equation of state. Okay, so uh, we're making great progress here. We already have the lower volume at the critical point connected to the Van der Waals B constant. Here we have the critical temperature, which is related to both the A and B constants in the Van der Waals equation of state. And the last parameter that we have to establish here uh, for the critical point is simply the critical pressure. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, uh, that can be done by simply plugging the values of the molar critical volume and the critical temperature on the original expression for the Van der Waals equation of state uh, and just evaluate it at the critical point. Okay, so that won't be uh, too difficult. And let's try to see if we can do that. All right, so again, the idea is that now we evaluate this at the critical point. So that would be critical, critical, uh, critical, and critical. And uh, we can just solve for it, all right? So that is R, but then the critical uh, temperature is 8 uh, A over 27 RB, okay, divided over the molar volume, which is 3B minus B, that simply is going to be 2B. And then here we have minus A over the molar volume of the critical point square, so that is 9B squared. All right, so that's going to be a good deal of cancellation taking place here. We have that this R cancels with that R. Um, uh, here we have uh, this 8 cancel with that 4, so that is a five. with that 2, that's a 4. Okay, and uh, so let's see how this, uh, this works out. The critical pressure is going to be equal to 4A divided over 27B squared minus A over 9B squared. So that's simply going to work out to be A over 27B squared. Okay, and that is your critical pressure. A over 27 B squared. Okay, so we're done with this. Uh, that is how simply, just yes, by uh, looking at the uh, critical point and uh, uh, looking at the first and second derivatives of that isotherm, uh, uh, they need to be zero. Then we've been able to actually establish connection between the A and B parameters of the Van der Waals equation of state and uh, uh, the critical parameters of a gas that are uh, experimentally measurable. Okay, so uh, this is good. This, what this means is that the Van der Waals equation of state does have, uh, does exhibit critical behavior, and that's a dramatic change uh, compared to the ideal gas equation of state where there's not even condensation, right, because there's no attractions between, uh, between those gas particles. Now, the last thing that we're going to do in this video is try to see now how accurate this is, right? So yes, you, you get condensation, but do you get it accurately? Can you actually uh, uh, obtain these, these uh, 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 parameters reasonably well? Uh, the way that we're going to do this uh, in an easy way is to simply examine the value of the critical compression factor, because that's something that is quite common among many gases, right? That, that uh, compression factor at the critical point tends to be about 0.3, okay? And, and uh, so, so if we actually get a numerical value from the Van der Waals equation of state, we should be able to compare it on equal footing with experiment and then get a better understanding for how accurate this, this Van der Waals equation of state is. Again, remember here that um, the compression factor at the critical point uh, has a definition of uh, P, V, M, and everything is at the critical point over R, T at the critical point. So now what we actually have is, is values for each one of those critical uh, parameters that we have right there. So I'm just going to uh, write them on top. Okay, so the pressure is going to be A over 27B squared, which we have right here. The molar volume is 3B, so that's what it is there. R is just a constant, and then the critical temperature, we have it right there. So this is 8A over 27RB. 
Alright, so let's see what happens here with uh, all this. This b squared cancels with that b, and then the remaining b cancels with this b. Uh, we have that a cancels with that a, uh, uh, and then we have this r cancelling with that r. This 27 cancels with the 27, and in the end, what you actually get is that that value is 3 eighths, which is the same thing as 375. Okay, remember that experimentally for many gases, okay, this tends to be about 0 0.3. So you can clearly see that the Van der Waals equation of state is not perfect, but it's actually reasonable. Again, remember that for an ideal gas, if this was the ideal uh, gas equation of state, that value would be 1, which clearly doesn't capture experiment. Okay, and we actually now have that the Van der Waals equation of state is a reasonable uh, approach to, to reality, not perfect. Uh, but it's actually quite sensible uh, if you actually consider how simple uh, the Van der Waals equation of state is. It's very similar to the ideal gas equation of state, but it simply has some sort of uh, corrections for attractions and repulsions, and those simple corrections already get you quite close to reality, even if, if you don't capture reality perfectly. Okay, so let me wrap up this video. Uh, in this video we have seen, we have delved a little deeper uh, into the Van der Waals equation of state and we've seen that it leads to condensation. We've been able to find relationships between the A and B parameters of the equation and the critical parameters of the gas. And we've seen that uh, the critical compression factor that you can obtain from that Van der Waals equation of state captures reasonably well uh, experiment.